If I had a dime for every time the Decepticons try to bring Cybertron to Earth, I would have four dimes. This isn't a lot, but strangely these happen four times. And of course, every time this plan is thwarted by the Autobots with the Decepticons and Cybertron ending up in a worse position. But regardless, they try again and again. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. One of the consistent plot points in almost every Transformers series is that Cybertron is barren in a desperate need of resources. Resources that the Earth is rich in. But instead of moving the resources millions of light years, the Decepticons usually decide to cut the travel time and transport Cybertron to our solar system. It happened in the G1 cartoon series, the Dark of the Moon film, The Last Night, and now the new comic series. The new comic series written by Daniel Warren Johnson is Transformers at its best and most brutal. The latter is shown through the character of Shockwave. After the Ark and the Nemesis leave Cybertron, Shockwave is left in control of the planet. He spends most of his time hunting down Autobots and performing somewhat immoral science experiments on prisoners of war, such as when he spent hundreds of years torturing and ripping apart Ultra Magnus. So brutal was the torture that Magnus begged Alita one to kill him when she tried to rescue him. But torturing and experimenting aren't Shockwave's only pastimes. He also wants to replenish his homeworld of Cybertron, Cybertron which is essentially on the verge of death, having been devastated by eons of civil war between the two Transformers factions. But to do so would require an enormous amount of resources. Resources that are soon discovered on Earth by the Decepticons. The Decepticons on Earth led by Soundwave manage to restore communications and a space bridge link with Cybertron. Shockwave crosses through alongside Alita 1 and Ultra Magnus, two Autobots that Shockwave was unaware of. The other Autobots soon arrive with Optimus at the lead to shut down the space bridge. Of course, superior Decepticon numbers and firepower force them to retreat. However, they do manage to damage the space bridge before they leave. But Shockwave decides not to pursue them and tells the Decepticons to instead focus Focus on re-establishing the link between Earth and Cybertron. In addition, a huge energy feeder machine is also constructed, a machine that can absorb organic life and other terrain resources and turn them into viable energon. Shockwave offers a demonstration when nearby whales and other fish are sucked in and grinded into small organic matter. But the question now becomes, how to move this to Cybertron, a planet millions of light years away? Gathering all of Earth's energy with the energy feeder will take almost a century, but Cybertron is on the edge of death, a thirst for food. The process must be sped up at any cost. We should take Cybertron and push it somewhere else! To do this, Shockwave decides to reach into the old Decepticon playbook and use a space bridge to transport Cybertron to Earth, thereby cutting down the travel time and most likely being able to use the technology on Cybertron to harvest the Earth faster. Now the most recent issue ends here and it remains to be seen what will happen next. Will the Earth or part of it be harvested? I cannot say for sure, but perhaps I can give you a hint by going after what's happened before in other iterations of the Transformers series when something similar was attempted. Now, you're not going to believe me, but the Decepticons have actually tried this multiple times, I'm not even kidding, and they don't plan to stop. <laughs> If there's a space bridge, the Decepticons are putting Cybertron through it. It's a tradition at this point. Going all the way back to the beginning, the Decepticons try to do this in the G1 cartoon. Megatron decides to bring Cybertron to Earth. He knows that this will cause natural disasters like extreme weather and earthquakes because of Cybertron's gravity, but he's expecting that. You're bringing a planet to the Earth? Yes, but the gravity of your planet will create earthquakes, tidal waves. It will devastate my planet. But that devastation will create a tremendous flow of energy. Energy which your hypnochip slaves would collect into energon cubes. Because apparently, the Decepticons plan to somehow harvest the energy created by these disasters. Not exactly sure how you can turn an earthquake into power or energon, but I feel like almost anything can be turned into energon at this point. But anyways, Megatron seems like a guy that has his head on straight, so he probably knows what he's doing. As the earthlings say, fat sense, fathead. I mean, maybe they can build some windmills to harvest all the hurricanes or something. I don't know, somehow all the earthquakes of the world will be turned into purple energy on. Yum. He also hires a literal mass scientist who kind of looks like the doctor from Back to the Future. Not sure where they found this man, but come on, he has a face you can trust. You will obey me, slave. You have no choice. I mean, when you kind of think about it, if you could harvest energy from natural disasters, I would expect that Japan would be the largest exporter of energy in the world. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, this plan isn't looking good. But regardless, Shockwave makes plans on Cybertron and the space bridge is eventually opened. The Autobots eventually discover this and decide to head over and kick Megatron's ass. Megatron decides to release some human slaves and use them as shields. Okay, now we have slavery and human shields. Interesting. Yeah, G1 is a lot darker than I remember. Optimus and Megatron battle one another. Optimus wants to turn the space bridge off, but doing so would 
would send Cybertron into oblivion. Optimus, now wanting his crypt to be lost, decides to allow the activation of the space bridge and bringing Cybertron to Earth. By the way, have you noticed how Cybertron has gigantic buildings on it? Like they're the size of continents. Wonder what a penthouse would cost on one of those. The rooms are probably zero G at the top. Anyways, getting back to the story, the Earth is suffering from constant earthquakes and storms with Cybertron entering orbit. Megatron begins to load his shuttle with energon cubes to send to Cybertron. Eventually, the Autobots realize that if they blow up the shuttle as it gets closer to Cybertron, the explosion could push the planet out of Earth's orbit, saving it. We just gotta knock Cybertron out of its orbit! That's impossible! It would take an explosion equivalent to 10 billion astroliters of energy! That idea may just be crazy enough to get us all killed! And it works, and for some reason doesn't harm Earth. Well, another successful plan, eh? So the Decepticons brought Cybertron to Earth, they caused natural disasters, and eventually the planet was pushed away in the solar system to drift endlessly. Next up, in the Transformers Dark of the Moon film, the Decepticons would also decide to bring Cybertron to Earth, but this plan is actually dumber than the one from G1. The Decepticons plan to bring Cybertron into Earth's atmosphere and use humans as a slave force to rebuild the planet. Okay, at the size of Cybertron, the Earth is going to be in Cybertron's atmosphere, not the other way around. Also, at that size, the gravitational force of Cybertron would tear the Earth apart, and most likely the two planets would collide with one another. And how will 7 billion tiny humans even be effective at rebuilding a planet of that size? Especially because humans can't even breathe on Cybertron. I don't know, I'll stop ranting. Now the Autobots defeat the Decepticons and send Cybertron back, potentially destroying the planet. I mean, that didn't look good. But it doesn't appear that there was any effect on the Earth though, even though a portion of Cybertron made it through. It appears that the gravitational pull caused no issues for the Earth. Not sure if physics are different in this universe or that Michael Bay doesn't really care. Are you throwing those on us? Yes. Yeah, no, and then I'm gonna slap your ass with this towel. <laughs> Yeah, I'm guessing the second one. Of course, if Cybertron had made it through, it would have directly collided with the Earth. I mean, there's like one Earth diameter between the two worlds. Most likely, the Decepticons would have killed their slave force, most of their army, and the vast resources of Earth. This plan was far worse than the last one. At least they had a trusty mass scientist. The gravity of your planet will create earthquakes, tidal waves. It will devastate my planet. Also, we find out in this movie that this whole time the Decepticons had battleships and hundreds of soldiers on the moon. What were they doing during the first movie when Megatron was getting his ass beat in Los Angeles? I don't know. Lastly, in the Transformers of Last Night, Quintessa or something brings Cybertron to Earth, destroyed and harvested, I think. I don't know. Also, Cybertron is Unicron for some reason. Long story short, part of Earth is damaged when bits of Cybertron hit the surface. For some reason, Cybertron now has bits of it hanging off like arms. It's never explained, but whatever. Look, I don't even think most people who clicked on this video are watching anymore, so I'll say that Quintessa is defeated, Cybertron is now connected to the Earth for some reason, but it has no effect on the planet. I guess the gravitational pull of a Cybertron was turned off. Quintessa also turns into an Asian woman and Unicron starts waking up. The movie ends and we never get to learn what happens next because the movie sucks so much that a sequel was never made. The end, the movie was terrible. So what will happen in the comic? My guess is that Cybertron will have severe effects on the planet similar to G1. After all, G1 is the main influence for the comic. Earth will most likely suffer from natural disasters and perhaps the oceans of the world will have severe storms and waves making it impossible to cross. There will also be a serious risk of the worlds colliding and it's going to be a world ending scenario. The world will most likely come to a halt with the Autobots and human governments having to unite together to stop the Decepticons. In the end, obviously the Autobots will probably win and Cybertron will either be sent back or perhaps it will drift around in our solar system. My crazy guess is that we're going to see Megatron return somehow and maybe an introduction to Unicron. I feel like Cybertron moving through the space bridge might alert Unicron somehow and cause them to travel to the earth to destroy and harvest both Cybertron and the earth. Of course only time will tell but hopefully the plan is a little bit more sensible and not something dumb like harvesting earthquakes for energy. Anyway I hope you guys like this video. Please like, subscribe and let me know what you think will happen next. Overall this comic series is pretty good. I highly recommend it if you're looking for good Transformers content. Heck if you want good content period this is for you. In a world of trash like the last night this is the diamond in the mine.